Thank you. And finally, we're going to hear from Dr. Luis Fraga, who we are very honored to have here today. Uh, Dr. Fraga is a professor of political science and an associate vice provost at the University of Washington. His PhD is from Rice University. He studies urban politics, education politics, voting rights politics, the politics of race and ethnicity, and his recent book is Multi-Ethnic Moments, The Politics of Urban Educational Reform. Please welcome Dr. Fraga. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you. It's a pleasure to see uh, your mayor. I want to thank uh, the uh, University of Texas at San Antonio and the um, city of San Antonio for being here. Um, I'm going to take uh, the personal privilege of uh, telling you a little bit about uh, myself as well. Um, I'm a native of Corpus Christi, uh, born and raised in Corpus Christi. Um, it's nice to see President uh, uh, Ricardo Romo here as well. Hi, Ricardo. Um, my family uh, was here during uh, Hemisphere 68. Um, we drove in a non-air conditioned car uh, from Corpus Christi. Uh, we uh, I wasn't sure there was air conditioning. Uh, prior to 1968, there was. Um, and San Antonio was the city that we came to when we wanted to experience what big city life was like. Corpus isn't that small. Uh, it is smaller than San Antonio. But San Antonio has always held a very special place in my heart. It was the, uh, the focus of my doctoral dissertation. It's been the focus of a number of uh, studies that I've done. It's been uh, the focus of a book project that I've been working on forever, trying to understand, um, understand San Antonio and its politics, and especially the special place that San Antonio holds in the history of the Southwest and the history of the United States um, as a whole. Um, so thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to be here with you. Um, in 2005, a uh, group that I happen to be a member of that was established by the American Political Science Association um, published a book called uh, Democracy at Risk, How Political Choices Undermine Citizen Participation and What We Can Do About It. And this um, committee that I was a member of um, had one central question that it was trying to um, address. And the question was, why is civic engagement so low across the United States? And the concern that we had was that low levels of civic engagement, and we define civic engagement as any activity, whether on the part of an individual or a collective, devoted to influencing the collective life of the polity, the life that we all share. When you have low levels of civic engagement, you have questionable legitimacy, which gets at issues of government accountability. You have, on the average, high levels of cynicism of government, and you have great indifference. And our goal was to say, it doesn't have to be this way. There are ways in which we can try to better engage our citizenry that can allow for a very different sense of what our government is and what our government, in fact, can do. And what we found as well in looking at issues related to voting participation, looking at issues related to urban areas, and looking at issues related to the nonprofit sector in the United States is that the low levels of participation that currently exist in the United States are due to a whole set of political choices that are actually made by governments, and political choices that citizens can either choose to accept or choose to change. And the argument that we developed throughout the book is we have to understand why those choices are made, and we have to understand and develop strategies as to how to change um, those particular types of choices. Now, you're here. It's clear that you've obviously made a choice to do something different in the city of San Antonio, and that your city's leadership and the leadership of your major university here in the city of San Antonio have decided to take a different path. So your challenge is not making the decision to participate. Your challenge is twofold. One, your challenge is to get others engaged in the process, and as the previous speakers have said, develop new strategies for engaging them, and two, to come up with those new creative ideas. I want to suggest a few ideas to you. You have to think outside of the box, as one of our previous speakers said. I want to suggest a couple of other uh, ways that you might think of, of um, engaging your citizenry in a better way. You, of course, want to um, have greater uh, voter participation in your uh, city uh, elections. Um, city elections, depending on the nature of the election, sometimes city elections in the United States are particularly competitive, but you want to increase uh, your participation as much as you can. The more people participate in elections, the more public officials are going to be likely to listen to um, citizens' views uh, and perspectives. Um, how do you increase voter participation? It's pretty easy. You increase voter registration. How do you increase voter registration? Thinking outside the box. How about a competition among high schools 
where high school students are encouraged to register their parents to participate and vote? How about putting together a plan that simultaneously increases participation and increases civic education of youth in being able to think about how important it is for them to participate once they become eligible um, to participate? How about increasing civic instruction and working with your local universities to develop plans of public service where civics instruction in schools is part of public service projects? Why not have activities where university students and their professors work in combination with local schools at all different levels of government to be able to give them an opportunity to better understand the importance of participating in all types of elections, city elections um, in particular? Um, one other idea. How about if you had a system of neighborhood associations where, in fact, neighborhood associations competed with each other for membership? And there's a reward. For those neighborhood associations that are particularly effective at signing up more individuals, the city of San Antonio, in combination with the University of Texas at San Antonio, will host a block party for that particular citizen association. There'll be a reward, if you will, given to the association for the participation that it encourages and has. And there's a sense of greater relationship building between major universities and the city itself in the fashion of these sorts of activities. One of the things that we found in the course of conducting this study is that there is a clear creativity deficit in thinking about how to better civically engage the citizenry. It's important to try to think as creatively as possible. The bottom line is this. If a city is going to have, as I see it, if a city is going to have higher levels of civic engagement, that is the key to greater public accountability. We have to build communities and have to build better understandings of, of our interwoven destinies and our linked fate with one another. We have to build communities where individuals no longer understand themselves just as individuals but understand themselves as having lives that are in direct partnership with their neighbors and with their fellow citizens and residents in the city. If you can develop that sense of linked fate, that sense of common destiny, you're going to be able to establish a set of understandings with your city leaders that is going to allow them to better know how it is to respond to the interests, the ideas, the identities, the goals, the aspirations that I think we all have for ourselves, but they'll be able to link that to the goals, aspirations, ideas, and identities for the entire city. Thank you very much for this opportunity to uh, speak with you. I look forward to participating in, in your discussions. You're undertaking a magnificent process. You are prime, primely positioned to do something very significant and incredible that can serve as a model for the rest of the country. Um, good luck. I would like to point out that uh, President Ricardo Romo, president of UTSA, has joined us. Ricardo, where are you? Oh, there he is. Okay, good. I'm just about to invite you up here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dean. Thank you all. And, uh, and welcome and to my good uh, colleague, friend, uh, Luis Fraga. Uh, we were at Stanford together, 8990, at a think tank there, and uh, got to learn a lot about his uh, interests, and I'm glad to see you continuing in that important area. I also learned, sitting next to the mayor, that the mayor was your student and did a senior thesis at Stanford or something along the lines of that. So, uh, you know, it's kind of full circle here, right? Uh, we, uh, we welcome this opportunity to have individuals uh, have dialogues and conversation about important issues. Not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago, we had a, a distinguished uh, professor from Berkeley, uh, David Montejano, talking about his book, uh, Quixote Warriors. And they showed a picture there of uh, the grassroots political organizers of San Antonio back in the 1960s. And none other than Rosie Castro, the mayor's mom, was in that picture prominent among the folks that said, you know, we've got, we can't do politics as usual. 
this is a, sort of a good old boy network here, and uh, we will never see change unless we but work it differently. And the, the, out of the box was get into the, all the communities, get people to vote, and, and organize. And I, and I have to think, just uh, knowing how much of an influence um, Rosie Castro had on her sons, whether if she had decided not to do that and to do something different, whether or not we'd have Mayor Castro interested in politics at all. So I think uh, the influence there is, uh, is certainly profound. Certainly what uh, we know the mayor now is the mayor of education. Uh, it is really uh, a pleasure to see our mayor. I'm going to introduce him and, and tell you that he has uh, done great work already in the field of education in a very short time. But again, thinking out of the box, we just can't simply talk about we need to educate our, our students and we need to do more for education. Uh, specifically looking at things that are holding us back. And the mayor has found one of the things that hold us back is leadership, in that we really put individuals in charge of our school districts, and then we have 17 of them. So we, maybe we need more. I think we need like one or two. But uh, we have 17 school districts, and the leaders in these school districts, you can see some of the districts moving and advancing and doing great things for educating their children, and others just not moving at all. And why don't they move? It's, it's, you know, we blame the children. Say, so, well, the kids don't want to learn. The kids on the south side don't want to learn. Or well, the kids on the east side don't want to learn. No. And well, we blame the parents. Well, you know, the parents don't get out there and do things for their kids. But we never really look at the people running the programs. And I think the, that's, the mayor, that's, that's what the mayor is asking. He's not, and I think it's very good. And he's uh, done it in a really smooth way. He's not accusing anybody of not doing their job. He simply is saying is, this is a very, very important, and we need important, gifted leaders leading our school boards. And so I call him the, you know, we call him the mayor of education. But I, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you, since we have an, a, a UTSA audience, that he's also the mayor of uh, new thinking in terms of energy, renewable energy. Uh, we have a major, uh, and it's going to be good, it's going to be green. Uh, we have a major center here in Energy Institute, and... Uh, when he found out about it and noted that we recruited an internationally known scholar from Sandia National Laboratories to be our head of Energy Institute, he said, I want to see us step up and be a partner with you, and I'm going to talk to CPS, which invests a lot of money already in, in different projects, millions, to invest $50 million, $50 million in UTSA Energy Institute. And I tell you, Mayor, it's going to pay off. I, I, it really is already. Uh, one of the things that uh, the debate back a few years ago was uh, nuclear energy, you know, do we build any more nuclear plants or not? Well, now we're saying, well, I'm glad we didn't build a whole bunch of them, you know, and, uh, because uh, we're questioning about uh, that. But we, we need thoughtful uh, interaction uh, here, and uh, 